Hello and welcome to episode 174 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is February 13th, 2023. Today I'm wearing the beautiful Town Square shawl, which is a design by Romy Rosemary Hill out of her book New Lace Knitting. And um, I knit it out of Opal Sock Yarn as usual. And I used a colorway that, um, that is mostly blue and had just a little bit of green in between. But um, the shawl is knit in two sections. So you start with this big triangle in the middle and then um, you do the border extra. And I decided to use some neon green yarn in between those two sections just for fun. <laughs> yeah, I still like uh, that I did that. It's a beautiful pattern, like most patterns by Romy or all of her patterns actually. Um, it has different lace patterns so you don't get bored. It's always interesting to knit. And at the end there's this um, pico bind off. I'm not quite sure whether she has beads in the original design or whether I decided to put beads into the shawl and I used tiny little square beads. I think maybe you can see it in the camera that they are not round but square. I thought that was quite funny, especially as the shawl is called Town Square. <laughs> it's funny to have those square beads in there. Yeah, it's um, it's a two skein project. So I used 200 gram skeins of opal yarn and a little bit of the light green. And um, like this shawl a lot. And the pullover I'm wearing is the Kangaroo Lover by Stephen West. I'm pretty sure, sure most of you will know Stephen West as a designer, knitwear designer. And um, I, yeah, the, it's called the Kangaroo Lover because of this big kangaroo pocket in the front of the pullover. But one of the interesting things about this pullover that it's knit in different directions and you knit uh, several you knit it in sections, but you don't have to sew them together, but they're all knit together. And you can use different yarns. I use the six ply sock yarn held double. It would be a great um, project to use leftover yarns, but I picked the colors I wanted in the pullover. And um, yeah, I chose different colors for the front, the back, the sleeves, and those side panels. And I used a dark blue yarn held double to um, attach things together and for the I-cord edgings um, around the edges. <laughs> but I not only knit the kangaroo lover, but I also knit the trousers that go with the pullover. So it's a really a wide, comfortable pair of trousers. And I use the same color yarn for the front, that I use for the front of the pullover for the front of the trousers. And then for the back, I also use the same colors and it's the same dark blue that I use to attach the two sides together. And um, yeah, the trousers is knit, the, the front and the backs are knit the same, but because of my colors, I have a very defined front and uh, front and back. There's eye cords around all the edges again. And um, yeah, it's a very funny, very colorful and really warm ensemble. <laughs> that I love to wear here in my shop. And I like to ref refer to it as my work uniform. <laughs> I do tend to be dressed up in wool and knit and crochet things every day anyway. Um, what I don't have yet is a pair of um, leggings or, or tights or something that I knit myself that, um, that go with this, where the color goes with this. So I have two pairs of knitted um, um, leggings that I have, but one is with red and gray and the other one is a gray and a bit of pink um, color. So they don't really go with this. <laughs> but I think one day I could knit a pair of blue, maybe dark blue uh, leggings. That'd be great anyway, because that would go with almost everything I have. Yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Then on to finished objects. Um, I have two finished objects this week and two, excuse me, 
two new cast on so that evens out perfectly. That's really nice. The um, older project of the two that I have finished are the film reel socks for my brother-in-law. And last week I already showed you one of them inside out, but I decided to do that just once again now that I have woven in all the ends. <laughs> I have actually woven in all the ends except for the two ends at the front of the socks because I might be undoing the, the toe. I just realized that I did actually weave in all the um, ends from, from the white stripe. Um, so if I... If I have to undo the whole toe, then I'll just have to pick out the yarn. That should be okay. So, um, but one of the reasons I wanted to show um, this to you again is uh, because of the floats that I kept um, this way. So in the pattern, she asks to, uh, she tells us to cut the yarn with every stripe and I didn't want to do that. So with this one and the last pair that I knit, I always kept them and left them running. The first pair, I cut some of the yarns, but not all of them. I think I did. I cut the white yarn because this is the longest way that it has to travel and um, didn't feel like leaving it in. But with this and the second pair, I left them in. But now with the next pair that I cast on, I've decided to cut them all. Just for a change, just to see how it works. <laughs> and because I like to change things up. Yeah, but these are the um, finished film reel socks. I'll just quickly turn it around so I can show you uh, what the films look like. Um, and uh, you can see how the two socks are different, uh, the way I like to knit them. I didn't pay special attention to have them different. I just kept knitting the way the yarn came and it just happened to be in a different place in the color. Um, thingy. <laughs> you can't think of the word right now. But anyway, you can see there are different films. The heels are a bit different. The cuffs are a bit different. The toes are a bit different. But um, yeah, I really like. It's interesting how this sock has sort of darker films and all the stripes seem to be lighter in this one. Um, yeah, it probably has a dark color in the heel, which is quite nice. And some of it in the toe. So um, yeah, that's really interesting. It's a fantastic pattern. Um, I will be knitting several more pairs of <laughs> film reel socks because I've decided to knit a pair for everyone in my sister's family and I will knit at least one pair for myself. Um, yeah, <laughs> a lot of film reel socks in my future. But that was finished object number one. Finished object number two is the square that I started crocheting last week for the Viva Vittoria organization who are um, doing an event next month in Darmstadt in a German city and they are going to put blankets out on a public square and uh, want to highlight the topic of violence against women. And after the event, the blankets are going to be sold and the money is going to be donated to help women who've become victims. And this is the my last square that I made for this uh, event because we have to get the squares to Darmstadt at next Monday, next Monday at the latest. So I want to send them off tomorrow to make sure they get there in time. So I'm not going to start another square. But um, for this square, I think I show you one finished square, Mozambique square, out of the book uh, Sirens Atlas by Shelley Husband. She designed this square. I crocheted four of them. I sewed them together. And then I did look at her book, Granny Square Patchwork. But at that moment when I was uh, about to start the edging, I was just too tired to follow one of the patterns. So I actually did just do uh, double crochets. And then I did one row round of double crochet and a chain. Um, and then I did one more round of double crochet and then the 150 gram skein of yarn was finished. I only had a little bit left. I knew I couldn't go around a whole time again. And then I picked two four ply um, yarns, leftover yarns that I had. One was a solid like light blue, jeans blue. 
And the other color um, was a um, colorful <laughs> ball of yarn with, with blues and green and a bit of the um, like off-white. And I think it doesn't really show you that the last two rounds were crocheted with a yarn held double with different color than, um, the, uh, than the rest of the square. So I think it blends in nicely. Really happy that I managed to get it to be 50 centimeters that way. Again, I put my name tag because they want all the squares to be um, to be signed. So it doesn't have to be your name. It could be just the same button on all the squares that you've made or maybe a crochet application or something. Um, but I decided to put my name um, on my squares. So I ordered these um, little dingies. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Um, so that's my second finished object for today. And the knit along, crochet along, make along that we had for the Viva Vittoria squares is sort of officially fin uh, ended now. But you know that I never close the discussion thread. So if you want to keep working on squares and donate them to different cities, you can do so. Um, from what I've heard, several German cities have already applied and want to um, do the same kind of event so there will be need uh, there'll be in need of more squares so we can just keep making them and if you like you can keep showing them over in my Ravelry group. So then on to works in progress. Um, as usual I'll start with all the socks and the first sock at the moment the oldest one is my knee-high sock. You'll be seeing that uh, a few more times because it will take me quite a bit of time <laughs> to get that finished but I've added one more pattern and that's a pattern that I had already chosen last week I told you about I didn't tell you what it was I just told you that I'd chosen it so the last pattern that I showed you was this star um, pattern and then on the back of the sock so on top of the heel I just did this um, one stitch I don't know what to call this pattern, but I just kept changing the colors every stitch. And on the front of the sock, I knit my name. So um, the book I'm using to, um, to knit the knee-high sock is the second book by Anna Bauer. And um, that has an alphabet in it. And that's, um, at first, that originally that was what I wanted to use. But um, I decided to copy the letters out into a very nice notebook that I have that hasn't got, um, <clears throat> so it doesn't have like squares, but it has stitches in it, um, printed stitches that you can color in. And that way the pattern that you're going to make is not um, square and then turns into knit stitches, but the stitches in the book are actually a bit wider than high the way um, stitches are. And that way you can see what you are planning to do is going, what it's going to look like. And I just wanted to put the letters K-I-K-O in there so I didn't have to sort of jump around in the book because that's the whole alphabet. But once I copied the first K, I realized I didn't like it. They were really wide and they, I, I just didn't like the way they looked <laughs> once I copied the K. So I decided to go back to the first book that Anna Bauer um, published that's the alternate rebellion. Um, oh, I just realized I've got the English version. I <laughs> wasn't even aware of that. So Radical Patterns for Creative Knitters, that was her first book. And that has two alphabets in it. And I decided to use one of them. So just a quick look at the, um, it even has three alphabets. I hadn't noticed before. <laughs> But I chose the first one and when I um, copied the letters out into my notebook I felt like I really liked the way the letters look there. So now I will have a knee-high sock that has Kiko <laughs> knitted into it which I think is really funny. But I didn't want to have it right on top of the foot so that once I decided I wanted to knit the name into it I decided to wait a bit and first knit a different pattern so it would come up a bit higher. So if I wear a shoe, it would still be visible. Yeah, so that's really funny. The next pattern that I've um, picked out is uh, are some ice cream cones with three balls of ice cream in them. 
<laughs> I think that's a really funny pattern. And with this sock, I'm just putting things, putting in things that I like. So um, I love ice cream. So it's a good thing to have that in my sock, in my knee-high sock. That's it. Okay, then the next sock are the Annegret socks, the very plain vanilla socks. I hardly worked on them. I really debated whether or not to show them. I think I only added like four rounds or something. Not much. Won't show it for long. <laughs> That's that. Then, um, last week, one of my new cast-ons was the fairground socks that I'm testing for Deb Milstein. And um, I finished the first sock. So these are shorty socks. And she um, wrote that she loves sh shorty socks and they are her favorite socks. And she wanted to come up with a pattern that she could use as her go-to pattern whenever she wanted to make shorty socks. And this is the pattern. It's going to be published beginning of March. I think it was March 5th. I'm not 100% sure. But I have already linked it to her pattern. It doesn't show yet because it's still a test. But as soon as she publishes her pattern, the link will go live and you can you can go through my project page to her um, pattern page and then if you like the pattern you can buy it there. It has a very simple eyelet pattern on both sides of the foot. Um, it has this heel flap and gusset heel. Uh, I think she changed the pattern slightly after I finished um, the heel flap so it should be a bit higher then there would be a few more um, decreases but my sister has tried the sock on she likes it a lot the toe is sort of like the star toe that I knit with my socks but it's a bit different and it's a bit shorter than the toe that I'm used to knitting so the first time round I knit the toe the, sh the sock was a bit too short so I undid it and I just added one pattern repeat and then knit the toe again and now it fits her perfectly and I have started the second sock haven't done a lot, but the colors come out completely differently, which I like. And she will get a pair of beautiful, but different shorty socks. Um, yeah, so now the first sock is finished. I can um, get back to Deb and write to her about how much yarn I use and all the, those things that designers like to know. And then I can um, take my time with the second one and um, look forward to her publishing the pattern. The next sock I'm knitting is actually one of the two new cast-ons and that's the next um, film reel sock. As I said, I'm going to knit lots and lots of film reel socks and this time I'm using this color. So one of my nephew's um, favorite colors, color is um, yellow. I'm not quite sure I said that correctly. So I, one of my nephews his favorite color is yellow. He doesn't have many favorite colors, but I have two nephews. <laughs> so I'm knitting um, these film reel socks out of the Cats and Dogs series for all the family. And he chose the yellow. And I finished the first film reel. And this is what it looks like. I think it's really nice. It could be a sunrise. It could be like a desert landscape or something. And as I said, I decided with this sock, for no particular reason, to cut all the um, colors once I finished using them. And um, so this is what the inside of this sock looks like. So I've already woven in the ends of um, the first film reel. Right now there's just the black yarn that's all hanging there because I've only just started using it. And um, yeah, again, I've woven in the strands of yarn that sort of go this way. Um, yeah. So it basically looks the same as the other sock, just without those, um, those <laughs> strands of yarn. I'm pretty sure you know what I'm trying to say. Um, the sock is fairly elastic so it should be okay to put them on the socks for my um, my nephew actually tried on the sock that I knit for his father so um, that I would know which size to knit for him and the socks for my brother-in-law actually fit him perfectly so I can just use the same numbers for his socks 
And I know that um, that these socks are flexible enough to put them on, but I'm I tend to be rather too flexible than too tight, so um, I wasn't really worried there. But still, it's good to know that uh, they fit over the heel. So that was the last sock for today. Then the next project I'm going to show you are the mittens that I'm knitting for the pattern battle. So it's another Opal sock yarn, but it's one of the Abo colors. It's one of the subscription yarns. And um, I'm knitting the Pay It Forward mittens by Hori Locatelli. And I finished the first one. Haven't woven in any ends. <laughs> As you can see, lots and lots of ends. So this is the inside of the mitten. And this is the out the, the back of the hand that has the pattern. It's a fairly simple but really nice pattern that makes the color stripes sort of go in waves a bit. Um, my friend who has those small hands um, decided she wanted to have the mittens. And she decided she would like them as uh, fingerless mitts. And um, so, yeah, she tried them on and she said this was a good spot for her to start the ribbing. And uh, I made the ribbing the same length as the ribbing down here. Um, at first we had decided to do the same amount of ribbing on the thumb, but then I felt it would get too long, so I stopped a bit early. And she tried them on yesterday, she likes them. And um, yeah, so... That's good. I might actually finish this before the next subscription parcel arrives. That would be um, quite different to most of the times, but <laughs> I'd be really happy for that to happen. This is the second, the beginning of the second mitten and um, completely different. But with this yarn, it has such a long color repeat. Color repeat is the word I couldn't think of a few minutes ago. But the color repeat in this yarn is from here to up here. So that's really a lot. If I wanted to do them the same, I would have had to um, wind off all the colors from, from here to there. And that doesn't really make sense. So, and, and my friend doesn't mind having the colors differently. Right now, this looks really beautiful. These are colors that my sister likes, but the moment the green <laughs> comes, she'll say, no, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but Pay It Forward Mitts, free pattern by Jorge Locatelli out of this beautiful, I still think they're very spring-like colors and I enjoy knitting the mittens a lot. So then we come to the little dinosaur loop scarf that I am knitting for my cousin's son. I haven't done a whole lot of work on them, but... Um, the first leg is done. I think the second leg is mostly done. And this is where the body of the dinosaur um, starts happening. And just in case you haven't watched my old uh, videos, I thought I'll just show you the finished dinosaur again, um, just to remind you what it looks like. So this is one side, this is the other. And then, so I've, I think I have ex exactly half the square. Um, from the number of rows and um, yeah, it's it's a fun knit. I, I still enjoy doing the double knitting. I'm not too um, used to it now. I still have to think about like the edge stitches and things a little bit, but I'm getting there and the more I do it, the more, the easier it, it comes. So I really enjoy doing that and getting more practice. That's the word I was looking for. Then the next uh, two projects should be my pullover and my cardigan, but I didn't knit on the cardigan. And probably one of the reasons is that I spent too much time knitting on the pullover. So, um, but that's okay. Um, I can't always work on everything at the same time, which I think is okay. The Hopi pullover um, that I am knitting, I'm using these three colors now. So last week I was still working with those two. At the moment I'm using all three. So I have lots and lots of floats. And in a little while um, I'll be just using those two colors. And then I think I'll go back to using all three. And um, yeah, this is what the pullover looks like at the moment. Oops. <laughs> I 
Okay, this is what it looks like. So I use two colors from here to here. And this, where the red stripe starts, this is where I started using all three colors. I have knit the second set of decreases. This is one of the decreases. So the number of stitches has actually decreased. And, um, but there will be more decreases coming soon, I think. Um, and just to show you the inside, there are lots and lots of floats. I really have to be careful with the needles. Usually I knit so tightly that I don't have to worry about the tips um, sliding out. But because I knit so loosely with um, when I use several colors, I really have to be careful. So I did not sort of cross the yarns um, once I started using all three colors, because with three colors, it's just too complicated for me. I'm sure you can do it, but I just don't. So the, the red floats are really, really long. I think as soon as I start wearing the pullover, they will get stretched out a little bit. It's just with the stitches bunched up on the needle, they look extremely long. But in judging these things, you always have to think about what does it look like when you have a finished garment and with the finished garment, the stitches will sort of, as, they, as it sits on my body, the weight will sort of pull it apart a little bit. And I think it'll look more like this. And then it'll be fine that I haven't, do you say weave in the strands or, or maybe just um, uh, trap? I think to trap the floats is the word. I didn't do that and I think it's okay. I'm looking forward to the bit where I can drop one of the colors. So I will only have two colors. I find two colors, no problem to manage. Three does get a little complicated. It's not complicated, it's just a little more work. I brought the sleeves. So this is what the main part of the front and back will look like underneath the yoke. And this is sort of the pattern that I'm knitting at the moment, but this is what it looks like when I drop the main color and just work with my two contrast colors, then suddenly everything gets a lot clearer. And I'm looking forward to that bit in the pullover when I'm just working those two colors, then the pattern suddenly will be very visible and, um, and the stitches will decrease and uh, I will go towards the end of the yoke and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but still enjoy this knit a lot. Quite crazy, very colorful, just the way I like it. Okay, then, as I said, didn't knit on the cardigan. Then we come to my next new cast on, which is a crochet project. And I'm never quite sure whether you say cast on <laughs> for a crochet project, but it's a new start, it's a new project. The pattern is called Elements of Life and it's a crochet long on Ravelry. And um, the pattern consists of four different round crochet somethings. <laughs> you can make them into cushions or you can make just a decoration. You could do a little, like a little blanket or, or, or what do you call it, table set. Or you could even do a, just do the first so many rounds and do a pot holder, things like that. Uh, and it's called Elements of Life because the four patterns um, are supposed to represent earth, fire, water, and air, I think. Um, and the patterns will come out every Friday. So the, the first part uh, was published last Friday. And then this Friday, um, the first pattern will be, will have the first element, the first uh, circle. <laughs> and then for every other uh, pattern, part of the pattern, uh, there'll be two Fridays where you can receive the pattern. All a bit difficult to um, <laughs> to explain. So in her pattern, she uses cotton yarn and one of her colors is she just uses one color and then for the other color, she uses different colors. I'm not really good at explaining things today. I feel I'm sorry, but um, yeah, so I thought about what to do and I decided I wanted to use sock yarn as usual, but I only decided to start the project on Saturday evening and I didn't want to go to my shop. So I decided to use some yarn that I have at home and just hope that I have some 
colors that work. And uh, so I decided to use this as the, I think this is the main color and the other is the contrast, but it could be the other way around. But I decided to use this Lana Grossa yarn, a Mylan White, and it's called Mega Boots Stretch Soft Color. Very long name. Um, I've had this yarn for a long time, so I'm pretty sure it's not available anymore. But I had originally, I had two different colors of that yarn. And with the other um, ball of yarn, I knit a pair of socks for my son. And I was really disappointed because I washed the socks maybe three times and they felt it so much that my son couldn't put them on again uh, anymore. So um, because they were too small for him uh, at that time, he was already taller than me. So for a while I wore the socks. But they just, um, every time I washed them, they looked uglier and they got smaller. So at the in the end, I just uh, put them away. So I decided I wasn't going to knit socks with this yarn. And I thought maybe I'll make a shawl or something that you don't wash as often. But I never got around to using it. And now um, I was looking for, for some earth colors because the first pattern is the earth pattern. But I'm not into earth colors at all. I never wear or use brown or beige or these colors. So um, when I looked at this yarn, it does have some green in it. It has a little bit of a brown color. So I thought I could, um, this would work as a earth color. <laughs> and then as a contrast color, I wanted to use white. Um, if I had found a light colored yarn, I might have used black, but um, with the dark color, I wanted to use white, but I didn't have um, a ball of white yarn at home, except for the one that I have on my film reel socks. But then I came across this ball of yarn. It doesn't have a, a ball band anymore, but I'm pretty sure it's a Wollerödel yarn. That's the shop that I used to work for. And it felt like almost a full skein of yarn. I didn't weigh it, but that's okay. But those two colors have a good contrast, so I thought that they should work nicely for this kind of pattern. And um, she calls the pattern a mosaic pattern, but I think, or I, I thought that um, with mosaic crochet, you use both colors at the same time, but she doesn't. You only ever crochet with one of the colors, but she also calls it overlay crochet. So I think that's a technique that she uses, the overlay technique. And this is what the beginning of the earth uh, pattern looks like. I really like it. I've never done the overlay crochet before, I think. I've read about it a lot. I've seen it a lot. I think I've bought several patterns that use this technique, but I don't think I've actually done it before. So I was really, I'm not quite sure. Maybe I have tried it before, but can't remember at the moment. So, so I haven't done it a lot. And I wasn't too comfortable. I know how it works, but the pattern is really well written. She has videos that help uh, if you don't know how to do something. And um, it's explained really well. Um, this is what the back looks like. So you can see that uh, I'm using um, the colors every other round. You never cut the yarn. You just um, pull the yarn up. Um, the first several rounds, I just did the easy join at the end of the round but then I wasn't after a while I wasn't too happy with what it looked like so I checked out I think this is um this is the one of the beginning and end of rounds that I didn't like because this is just too bright there and this was a bit too wide but then I looked at her invisible join and that works really well and I've been using that for the um, last couple of rounds and I'm really happy with it now. And I was my it, my first plan was to um, just make a decoration, sew it into one of those metal hoops, and maybe hang it on the wall here in my shop. But now that I'm crocheting it and it's such a soft yarn, <laughs> I might make a cushion after all. I don't know yet, but I'm really happy with how it comes along. I'm really happy to to try out this new technique, and. Um, yeah, and I just, I want, I really wanted to start this now so you have a chance to join in. As I said, the first clue has come out, but that's, I think, no problem. If you want to join in now, um, you can get the pattern. It's linked on my project page, which is linked underneath the video. It's called Elements of Life uh, by Susanne Anaka. And it's, uh, the pattern is both in German and English. I think she's German, but I'm not 100% sure. 
And that brings me to my last project and the other crochet project I have on the go. And of course, that's my alpaca lace uh, granny square. And I added, didn't do too much last week, I added the purple and the red and the black round. And I hit, it was almost exactly 100 grams when I've, after I finished the red round. I think I haven't written it down on my project page yet, but I will. And I have started the next round and I'm using this bright pink again. And I've already used that pink twice before. So this was the, the third round of the square is the pink. Then I used it again here. But I think now that it's next to the black, it looks so much brighter. And I love the way it looks now. So after this, I'm going to use the other sort of um, rose color. It's not a pink, but it's... Um, anyway, I'm going to use this color and then I'm repeating the black because I'm going to do the black now uh, every third round. And I'm really looking forward to um, what that's going to look like. And yeah, still enjoying this project so much. By the way... I'm pretty sure most of you will know the trick, but if you put down your crochet, um, if you put in a stitch marker um, onto your stitch, it really helps to not uh, lose that stitch. I've done the same here. It can be any of the stitch markers that you can open up and, and um, put onto a stitch, and then you can pull on the yarn and nothing happens. I'm pretty sure most of you know it, but just in case there's one of you who doesn't, I think it's such a good trick. It... Um, uh, it's okay to keep repeating it. Yeah, so this is everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed this video. Next week, I'm not going to um, do a proper normal video, but I am going to show the video that I made last month where I show all the gnomes that I knit last year. So last year was the year of gnomes. Um, uh, Sarah Shira announced it to be the year of gnomes and I knit a minimum of one gnome per month and uh, some months I knit a, one more or many more gnomes <laughs> but I made a video and before I gave the ones away that I wanted to give away and next Monday I'll be on holiday so I won't be able to uh, make a video so you can see all the gnomes if you like watching gnomes you've seen them all before because I've had them in my normal um, videos already but there you can see them all together and then in two weeks time I'll be back with um, everything that I knit and crochet this week and next week on my holiday um, yeah so I'll see you then <laughs> bye <laughs>